the overhead. So what do you do with the overhead? You see, I don't know, you've probably watched as many times as I have somebody hit the ball into the net on an overhead, they just go like, they go like basically wham into the net. Uh, there's a, a large number of contributors to that. Um, one of which is that people tend to want to do risk. They want to risk, you know, try to use a lot of risk. The problem with using a lot of risk is, is that you get a rapid angle change of the paddle. So again, we're back to time errors. If you have uh, a wrist motion, see how fast that is versus the full arm? See how much slower the full arm is? That wrist, you know, wrist, I can do that. Full arm, you know, at least half as fast. So you see a lot of people making the mistake, pulling the net because they get excited, they swing it really fast with the wrist and pull it in the net. Well, why do they use wrist? Because they're afraid to hit it long. They're afraid that they'll be too slow if they do a full arm and they contact it with the paddle up and it'll go long. So then they tend to say, well, I'll just, I can fix that if I just, you know, do wrist and I'll get it much faster. I'll never hit it long. Of course, it'll never hit it over either, but, you know, going to that, but, you know, solves the getting it long problem. So what do the pros do? Well, first of all, they don't face the net when they're hitting it. They don't do like this, or even like this with a full arm. They don't do it. They don't face the net. Why? Same reason I mentioned of getting sideways. They want power. You got to step off the back foot to get power. Doing like this, you're not getting any power from stepping off. You only get power from stepping off like this. So they get sideways. Um, one of the things they try to do is they try to reduce the amount of muscle that they use by lengthening the stroke, by having the paddle face or the racket face move farther. There's several ways they do this. One is they don't just take the paddle up and go like, you know, they don't just do like this. Very, very, very short swing. So let's, let's talk about it from the side. So if you just do it like this and you do it like a short swing, very short paddle, uh, you know, very short uh, paddle movement, hardly going at all. So in order to get power, you got to swing as hard as you can. You're using a ton of muscle. In addition to, in addition to having a ton of muscle, you got to go from a dead stop to full speed to a dead stop really quickly. And so timing the, you know, the speed in the, in the position here becomes really different. If you do a full arm, it's much easier to time that. There's much less error because you've got a little slower paddle rotation. And if you have a nice long swing, you don't hardly have to use any muscle to get a nice fast velocity on the ball. So if you have a long swing, you uh, get a, a fast paddle face motion without having to use much muscle. So how do the pros get a, a, long, a long swing? Well, the first most noticeable thing they do that maybe a beginner would do, a beginner typically will do something like this, they get the paddle down low. They get the, they get, you know, they, they do what's called the back scratcher, which is they're not literally, oh, oh that feels, you know, they're not literally scratching their, their back, but it's, it's looking as if they were about to. So you can see that going from here to say here is a much longer swing than just taking it up, taking it up, be ready, and then just do like a little wrist thing. It's a much longer swing. What else did they do to get the, uh, the paddle to have a longer swing? They drop the shoulder. How do they drop the shoulder? They raise their other, their other shoulder by getting their arm up. You see this on a serve in tennis. They toss the ball and do it. But you see them on an overhead tennis. They're going to hit it over it. They get their, they get their arm up there. And that drops, that drops their racket head. Or in the case of the goal, it drops the paddle head. So even though you're never going to serve it, Overhead, over, even though you're never going to do a standard like a tennis serve in pickleball, you need to do this to get that, that shoulder drop so you can get a longer swing. What else do they do? They bend their knees. So they get the shoulder to drop, and that does it. But then they bend their knees. That gets the paddle even lower. And then they push up, and then they get that gives them, helps them have even more force into the ball. If you don't bend your knees and you try and push off, well, you can push off by extending your, you know, you know, basically lifting your heels, but if you're down here, you can extend your legs, you can straighten your legs and get much more uh, 
swing into the ball. And by doing all of that, low, you know, low shoulder, bend the knees and swing up, back stretch or swing up for the back stretch, you get a huge amount of force into the ball without much effort. You don't effort much, you get to relax. If you relax, guess what? You play well. So that's kind of a key thing. The one other thing, which is less related to to uh, racket uh, your head speed or, or in the case of pickleball paddle head speed, they do something called pronation. 